Good morning! Hi everyone, my name is Dawn. Lovely to meet you guys. Um, welcome to my first ever Friday Free Refund Art Class. Um, it's a bit strange, I know, watching it on Instagram, on Facebook, but crazy time of Corona, so we do what we can. Um, so yes, welcome. Today I'm going to show you a very fun craft activity that you can do from the comfort of your home. Material-wise, it's a little bit tricky because you do have to get some special things, but I do have them on my online store. Or you can simply um, go online to Winterwood, my favorite ever craft store. I'm not sponsored by that, I just love their stuff. And you can shop up a store there. <laughs> but yeah, I do have some craft packs, um, felting packs available online, which you can just purchase. It's $20, it will be enough to create an entire picture. <laughs> So um, I'm going to show you really quickly what exactly we're doing, the materials we need, and I'm going to start. So first up, I'm going to show you how to make your very own mermaid, or actually any picture really. Um, I might do a dinosaur today instead, because I've already done a mermaid one, but um, the idea is you can make a felted picture just like that, dry felted picture, because you're not going to use any water or anything, um, apart from a needle and some wool. And you can pretty much just sew the bits up. So I've done like a long bit like that. You can sew up this bit, sew up that bit. And you can wrap it around your book and it can become a book cover. Very simple. Mummy or daddy might need to help with the sewing. Or if you're really good with sewing, you can do it yourself. But there you have it. You have a book cover. Like that. Sew up the side so that it sticks in. There you go. Or... I've also been busy making a Easter crown for Louis. Louis is my little baby son. Um, yeah, I made this the other day in class with the kids because I was trying to show them a demo piece and then I ended up making a crown. So yeah, that's a little bunny Easter crown. It's very fluffy, very fun. And I'm also making a first birthday crown for Louis. This is a autumn crown because I just thought he's still so young. Making him little crowns can be quite fun for him to put on his head and play dress ups with in future. So this is a little fat mouse that's throwing autumn leaves in the air because Louis is very squishy and he was born in autumn. So I just thought this would be fun. So yeah, you can do anything. You can do crowns, you can do um, notebook covers, you can do bookmarks, you can even do like a little belt. Up to you what you want to create. But I'm going to show you how to actually even do this and you can decide after that what you want to do. So I'm going to pop these aside first. So the materials that you need, very, very simple. First, you need a felting block or rather a foam block. If you don't have a foam block, you can even use a car sponge, in something that's not too soft, something a little bit firm. See, it's a bit firm. Um, so yeah, a sponge, a kitchen sponge will work as well. Or in my felting packs, I do have these sponges available, but a smaller version. So you need a sponge. So, um, so as to protect your needle. Now, these needles of mine, they're a bit fancy because I use them. <laughs> so I like to be a bit fancy. I basically added my own little needle holder, but you don't need the needle holder. You can also just use the needle straight up like that. Let me just show you very quickly. So not sure if you can see. I'm just going to come closer to you. So this needle is pretty special. The top of it is like, a little bit flat so you can hold it like that. I like to hold it like that or sometimes I hold it like that. Can you see? Yeah. The top bit here is round. It's safe to hold. Now the bottom bit here is a bit more interesting. It's quite um sharp over here. And if you look really closely, I'm going to spin it. I'm not sure if my camera will focus. Um, you can make out and see tiny little barbs on the front there. So... The way these barb ah, you can see it now. So the way this needle works, very, very simple. When you have a piece of felt and you use a looser piece of felt like that, when you poke it down, so I'm going to show you a quick demo here. I might do a dinosaur today. Um, when you poke it down just like that, what happens is each time you poke it, the tiny little barbs, or I like to call them the spikes, on the front part of the needle, will basically pull all the loose wool and push it down and combine it with this flat piece of felt. Does that make sense? So that's why it's very important that you don't play with the front bit of the needle because needles are sharp, but this is a 
very very sharp needle this is a lot sharper than your usual needles and the tiny little spiky bits at the front uh -uh, you don't want to get it caught on your finger because especially if you poke it ah, <laughs> it's gonna hurt so anyway to be safe i like using a paintbrush as well and i hold the wool in place can you see da -da -da -da. this way my fingers are protected so yeah um so you need a foam block you need a needle needle holder like that optional you also need a piece of felt i like to use wool felt um i wouldn't use those uh acrylic felt from like art stores whereby it's made from like plastic and stuff because that sort of felt when you use this it probably blunts your needle quite a bit and it's not a nice feeling to felt with you, you'll know the feeling is just <laughs> but yes um wool felt nice wool felt and you need wool like that too so these wool bits are all from sheeps in new zealand and they're very very nice and fluffy of course, the children often ask me, or rather, if you're a kid watching this, you'll ask me, huh? But it's from sheep, but, but sheep, it's not colourful. Of course it's not colourful. So this is actually wool that they've gotten from a sheep. And what they've done is they've actually dyed the colours of the wool to get these beautiful, yummy, delicious... See? Whoa, obviously there's no blue sheep out there. If there is, I would like to meet that blue sheep. But the idea is you can basically get all sorts of colours from just dyeing it with special dyes. So today I'm going to show you, this. basically this is all you need. Ta -ta -da. Oh, and a pair of scissors, just in case. So that's all you need, really. So I'm going to show you very quickly, because I've only got 15 minutes, how to do felting, okay? I'm not going to be able to finish the entire piece because felting does take quite a while to do. Um... But the idea is to just show you so you know how to do it and then you can do the rest yourself and if you have any questions at all you can just ask me so first thing first i've decided maybe i'm gonna do a big dinosaur here and a volcano on the side and some soil there and maybe i don't know we'll, we'll see what we'll see what i can do or maybe even a palm tree so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna start with the body of dinosaur first i might move my camera a little bit closer can you see it now uh -huh. So, actually, I don't like. I prefer to be able to see you guys still. Okay, like that. Aha! Uh -huh. Can you see? Okay. So first thing first, I'm gonna do the body of a dinosaur. I'm gonna do a. Um, oh dear! I forgot the name of the dinosaur with the very long neck. Brontosaurus, Broncos, Bronco. Mm, I don't know what. I, what did they call it? You probably know. Anyway, using a brush. A little bit of felt you only need a little bit each time if you use too much at one go the moment you poke it your needle breaks because this needle is very very fine this part here is a lot thinner than the top so anything too thick or too rough handling it breaks the needle that's why we have to use the foam block to protect it if you put it on the table straight breaks so yeah just a little bit of uh, full, uh, wool using your brush and very gently poke it down because I've been doing this for many, many years, I go. I tend to go quite fast. Once you get the hang of it, you can go fast as well, as long as you keep it, keep your fingers safe. But to start off with, you can do it really slowly. Use the brush, the hair of your brush maybe. Or if you don't have a brush, you can use a pencil as well to very carefully push the wool in place. Can you see? So I'm making a little round oval-like body for the dinosaur. I feel like this part here needs a bit more wool, so I'm gonna pick up a little bit more and poke it in. Okay, and there you go. I think I've got the shape of the body down. I quite like the way it looks. Oh, there's an aeroplane flying over at the moment. It's very loud. Now, I'm gonna add in the neck now, a long neck. So taking a little bit more wool each time round. Start from this part here, the body. And I'm going to poke it and then I'm going to use my fingers, use my brush, press it and neaten it up. I'm going to make it a little bit curvy. So if you want it a bit curvy, you just need to turn your wool a little bit. Use your brush to press it down and just poke it down. I like to also use my needle to actually move where my wool goes. So like that da -da -da -da, and poke it down. 
If I want to neaten this bit up here, I can push it in a little bit gently. Poke it in. Neaten this bit here, I can push it down. Poke it in. Okay. It's very satisfying actually. So yeah, you basically keep going, keep adding. You can add a tail. I think, I think the dinosaur has a tail. Oh yeah, yeah, it does have a long tail. I need to watch like Land Before Time. You know that dinosaur movie? My favorite dinosaur movie. I watched it when I was a kid. But yeah, I need to re-watch it to refresh my dinosaur knowledge. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, adding the tail, same thing. If this part here is a little bit too fat, I can use my needle to gently push it in like that. Neaten it up. Almost like picking up the wool and then poking back in. So the thing about needle felting is you basically have to just keep poking, just keep adding more, more, more to build it up. Make sense? Very, very slowly bit by bit there's no point rushing because if you rush then you won't get a nice picture okay so see how the dinosaur legs are coming together now now i'm not gonna do all four dinosaur legs because if not we won't have time but i just want to show you if you just want it to look a little bit brighter or if you feel like oh there's not much felt i need a bit more you can simply just add a bit more see there you go so once you've got your dinosaur picture or dinosaur in place you can keep adding a bit more to make it a bit neater like the head is a bit skinny so i want to add a little bit more wool here to make it a bit bigger always remember to keep your hands away never near the needles now the head looks a bit bigger if i had time i would add like spikes and stuff but anyway uh, just keep poking and you want to basically compact all the wool and push all the wool in as much as you can until it's nice and flat and no longer like furry and fuzzy something like this little rainbow over here see how it's not like it's very neat and not much wool is sticking up and it's not fuzzy anymore so yeah just keep going can you blend colors you certainly can you can take a bit of red a bit of brown mix it in da, 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 da. there you go and you can have a mix blended in brown color for the soil um yeah lots of different ideas so i'm not going to continue with this because it's going to be the same thing over and over again and i want you to have a go right now but before i go before i say goodbye i just want to let you guys know um once again if you have any questions at all just email me drop me a direct message on instagram um, if you're looking for felt packs, you can certainly buy them online. Um, swipe up. I've got new packs coming. So if you see that it's sold out, don't worry. I've got more. Um, they should be ready by the start of next week, the new felt packs. And I'll be able to deliver them. Now, before I go, last bit, next week. Next week, Friday Freebie Fun, we're going to be doing sushi collage. So um, we're going to be doing our own bento boxes, collage style. So lots of cutting, lots of gluing. So these are some materials that you'll need. I just want to show you very quickly before I go so that you can... Oh my. Oh, my camera just fell. Oops. Oops. <laughs> I'm doing this all in one take. So I don't have time. You know what? I'm just going to use my camera. Sorry if it's a bit jerky. But I'm going to show you what we need, okay? So we need some paints. Um... We, we only really need red, but if you want to be more adventurous, you can use other colors. We can, we also need scissors, glue stick, and a big fat marker. We need some colored paper. Sorry, this is very, very, um, I had it all nicely planned, but you know, sometimes plans don't go to plan. <laughs> but yeah, we need a whole bunch of different colored paper again. These are all available on my online store you can go grab what you have at home we can always reuse um there's green in there as well somewhere but i can't show you with one hand but anyway the idea is there and of course we'll also need one big a3 size or even a4 size or whatever size you want paper okay so we need all these different things paper colored paper paints glue stick marker and scissors all right yo i'm gonna log out see you guys next week i hope you've had fun following my little um felting lesson and once again see you online <laughs> bye